Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I'm gonna make a discussion video. We'll be talking about whether it is better to drive a jack of all trades tank or a one trick pony. So for those of you who uh, aren't quite sure what these terms mean, basically a jack of all trades is a vehicle that is able to perform pretty well in any situation or any role it gets put into. And the classical example for that would be the T-110 E5, the tier 10 American heavy tank that I am driving right now in the clip you can see here. And the T-110 E5 is a vehicle that basically it's got a very decent rate of fire, good armor, very good mobility basically it's good in every respect but it doesn't stand out to be amazing in any one statistic either over all stats it's just a very solid and decent vehicle now my platoon mate general denny with whom i'm playing together in this clip is driving the is7 and that is a very good example for the exact opposite of the T125 because the IS7 is a one trick pony. Now, what this means is that the IS7 is a tank that is completely dedicated to fulfilling one single role on the battlefield. And in the case of the IS7, this role is getting close up into the face of its enemies, bullying them, dominating them, using its strong frontal armor and huge firepower and basically to win a one-on-one -on -one engagement in close quarters. But the IS-7 is really bad when it comes to long-range engagements or when it is outflanked. And that's kind of where the weaknesses of IS-7 come in. And this is the reason why I want to make this video because that is something that you have to decide on when you're choosing your tank. Maybe you're deciding what line to grind down and you can't quite make up your mind. Do you want an all-rounder? Do you want a vehicle that you will be able to use reliably in any situation? Or do you want to have this tank that's really good in just this very one aspect? And that's what I'm going to uh, hopefully help you with in this video. Now, first of all, I want to give you a couple of other examples next to the T-125 for a jack of all trades. And uh, the vehicles that come to mind are the IS-4, also the Soviet medium tanks of so the T-62A, Object 140 and Object 430. Then the Japanese STB-1, the M48 Patton, the Tier 10 American medium tank and also the Chinese 113. So the great thing about these tanks, as I already pointed out, is that they're very flexible and they can adapt to almost any situation and that is useful in World of Tanks because a lot of the game comes down to RNG or basically factors that you cannot influence yourself. For example, what map you will spawn on or sometimes you will be forced to go down a flank that you didn't originally want to go down. Like maybe you are driving say an IS-7 or a, a mouse and you really wanted to go into the city but suddenly you realize your entire team is doing a lemming train towards the city and you have to hold the other side of the map. So then in that situation you are forced to do something that you weren't actually planning on originally. And in those situations it is really good to have a vehicle that can adapt, that can also perform the other roles almost as well as it would have been able to fulfill the plan you had set out for it. Now, the main disadvantage that Jack of all trades tanks have is, of course, that you cannot go into a game with that one specific plan your vehicle will excel at. As the IS-7 could, for example, being a one-trick pony, you could really play this tank so that you know you're going to drive up close and you can really try to get the most out of that vehicle by bringing it into these situations where it will excel, where you can play to its strengths and other one trick pony tanks with which you can do this for example the mouse or the gorilla 15 which the gorilla 15 for example is an excellent sniper but it's very bad at close quarters combat the fe 215b 183 because of its huge gun the t95 because of its massive armor but very low mobility and then also the swedish tank destroyers due to their amazing sniping capabilities as i already pointed out these tanks can be great if you are able to play them to their strengths and get them into a situation where you can maximize their advantage, right? But to do this, you really need to be a pretty skilled player a lot of the time because you need to be able to read the battlefield, to predict your enemy's moves a lot of the time. 
in order to be able to locate in a position or play according to a plan which will allow you to get into that situation where you can maximize your tank strength in via seven's case playing up close so uh, i would say that playing a one trick pony vehicle is quite a bit more challenging than a jack of all trades so i would suggest that if you are a new player to the game it might be better to head out for one of these lines that allow you to play almost in every situation fairly confidently like for example the t110 e5 would be an excellent choice and then once you've got a fairly good hang of the game and know how things work and uh, also know how to read the battlefield because that is the most important skill for a player who wants to specialize in one certain category of tank then that's when you can diversify or actually more correctly specify into one certain tank type that you want to play for example a sniper or a brawler so that would be my recommendation and what i hope you can take away from this video is start out with a jack of all trades with an all-rounder and then later after you've also found out what kind of playstyle you like the most then you can decide which one trick pony you would like to play because when you play a one trick pony and you play it to its strengths then it can be a lot more rewarding than a jack of all trades because the one trick pony will always perform better as long as you can get it into the right kind of situation but that as i already pointed out requires quite a bit of skill so that was it for this video and um, before I finish I just want to quickly point out for my subscribers that I've actually got quite a long time off school five weeks now or four weeks I think so I'll be putting up a few more videos than usual in the next couple of weeks so I'm looking forward to that I hope you guys are too thanks for watching as usual I hope you could learn something from this video and I'll see you next time or maybe even on the battlefield goodbye